What's up guys, my name is Nicknobo here for Troubleshoot and we're back with another Rust tutorial video. This is part of an ongoing series on my channel where we go through setting up and getting a Rust server to run properly, get a bunch of plugins, etc, etc. And it's basically a crash course. If you're interested in seeing more videos from this series, then make sure to check the playlist linked in the description down below. That being said, this video is entirely about moving files between your computer and a Rust server hosted on a hosting company's website, such as game servers. Now, of course, it's not company specific. However, I'll be going through how to use the game servers one in this video. Of course, each different company will have different ways of setting it up and getting it to work. However, this video is basically a crash course if you're hosted with game servers. Lucky for you, this video explains everything you need. However, if you're hosted with someone else, then you may need to find more information on their help documents, forums, etc, etc. So that being said, we're going to need a program to actually transfer files between our computer and the server. And the best program out there is completely free and called FileZilla. So heading across to the link in the description down below, you'll be heading to FileZilla-project.org. On this page, we'll go to Download FileZilla Client and then Download Client up here. It's 64-bit. If you need a 32-bit, then you can go ahead and click the little Windows icon down here with 32 next to it. I'll be downloading this one and you'll be presented with this over here. Simply look in the far right hand side where it simply says FileZilla and it's got a download button underneath. It'll then download an exe which we can click to open as soon as it's done. Then you should see this pop up over here automatically. We'll simply go I agree and here's where things change sometimes. So sometimes this installer does have adverts for installing other bits of software. I think Malwarebytes was on here originally at some stage. So of course if that pops up and this is slightly different to yours then you'll be able to choose no or skip installation etc etc when it gets to that. But of course if yours looks like mine then it doesn't have any adverts. So I'll check a desktop icon. Next, next, next. And here is an example of one of these adverts. I'll simply hit decline and it'll go ahead and install FileZilla. We'll just hit finish with the start FileZilla now checkbox ticked and it'll open up to something similar to this. So before we get into explaining this program, we'll go ahead and connect to the server itself. So we'll need to head across to game servers. Of course, if you're using a service that isn't game servers, then you'll need to head across to whatever that is. If you're on a page similar to this, head across to the info tab. Otherwise, if you see a page similar to this, head across to info over there. Then once you're on this page, you'll see the FTP information over here. So of course, we'll be copying the IP address that's listed over here. And we'll head across to our FileZilla and where it says host, we'll be pasting this in. Then we'll be making note of the port. If it's 21, then we can simply ignore it because 21 is the default. We'll be copying the FTP login, which is the username. We'll be pasting it in here where it says username. And password is in fact your game server's login password. So I'll simply paste that in and hit quick connect. When you see a pop up like this, you can choose to save passwords, but you should really choose save passwords protected by a master password, which you'll put in every time you connect to the server. Of course, I won't be saving passwords because I'm just simply doing a demonstration. Hit OK. And when you see a pop up like this, hit always trust and hit OK. There we go. So to begin explaining this, the left hand side is your local computer. If I head across to desktop, you see all of my files over here, which is FileZilla and the Microsoft Edge shortcut because I'm using a virtual machine. That being said, on the right hand side is the Rust server itself. Opening up the one with a number here, Rust E, yours may be slightly different. You'll see this folder over here, which is in fact the Rust game server itself. You have rustdedicated.exe, which you may recognize from hosting it yourself if you've ever done that, and a bunch of other files here. We have Oxide, which is what we're really interested in. Double clicking on it, we have the config and plugins folder over here, which is the main two ones we'll be focusing on. If you want to change how a plugin shows up in chat, you'll be changing it under Lang, followed by your language, and then plugins usually have their own localizations in here that you can go ahead and edit. So let's say we want to add a plugin to our server. How exactly do we go about doing that? So heading across to UMod's website, linked in the description down below. If you're not familiar with UMod, UMod is in fact the new name for Oxide. They have renamed and rebranded. At the very top, we'll go to plugins and click on it and we'll make sure to have Rust selected at the top. Then of course, you'll be searching for whatever plugin you want to install. I'll be installing the Welcomer plugin. Of course, if I can spell correctly, there it is. We'll click on it. And in the right hand side, we'll be clicking download. 
Once it's downloaded, you'll see a .cs file, and we'll go ahead and open up the folder that it's saved in. Because I'm using a virtual machine to demonstrate this, I'll be pasting it onto the desktop, opening up FileZilla. Remember, on the left-hand side is your computer. Simply navigate to the folder by using this up at the top, or using the dots here to go back a folder, or by simply copying and pasting in the actual folder address and hitting enter to go to it. As you can see, when I hit enter while having that selected, we refreshed this folder over here. This being designed for moving files between websites and other things like that, you'll need to manually refresh a folder by right-clicking and hitting refresh, or clicking up here and hitting enter, or by going back a folder and back into it. It won't automatically refresh. So there is our welcomer.cs file that we downloaded, all we need to do is go into the plugins folder and drag and drop it across. Great. Let's go back a folder and let's go into config. As you can see, the plugin has automatically been loaded and a config file has been generated. Referring back to our Archon that we set up in a previous video, we'll head across to the console tab and you can see over here, Welcomer was compiled successfully and loaded plugin Welcomer. Of course, if you want to unload it at the very bottom, type a command, oxide.unload, space the name of the plugin. And as you can see, because I didn't type it with a capital W, nothing happened. It is important to watch your capitalization here. There you go, you can see it was unloaded. If I were to simply go oxide.load, welcomer, you can see it's then loaded again. When we make changes to the plugin, we'll need to come back here and type in oxide.reload, space the name of the plugin, welcomer. Or if you want to refresh everything, we'll simply enter star and then hit enter and it will reload all of your plugins. Note that if you have a lot of plugins and there's players on the server, they will experience quite a bit of lag here, especially if they are big plugins or they do a lot. So I'm heading back to this FTP over here. Let's simply make it a bit smaller so we can see what's going on on our desktop. So we're inside of the config on the server side. Of course, you can change the folders up here. We'll simply drag and drop the config from this side to our computer. Once that's done, you'll notice a new file on your desktop. Of course, from there, you can go ahead and open it with something like Notepad or Notepad++, which I highly recommend. However, I don't have it installed here and it's small enough to do in default Notepad. And here are the settings for the plugin. So enable welcome message, true. Enable join messages, leave messages, etc., etc. But of course, there's no way to configure the actual welcome message. So this is the part where that localization I mentioned earlier comes into play. This is of course just the plugins settings and not any of the actual language or localization. If you're running a server with multiple languages supported, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So we'll close out of the config file that we just downloaded. Let's go back a folder, then into lang followed by en for English. And you should see two files here now, one of which being the plugin that we just added, Welcomer. Of course, if you only see one file here, rustcore.json, simply right click and refresh and you'll see it pop up. Then of course, we'll be downloading this file. Here's where we get to replacing files. So if we drag it from the right hand side to the left, you'll see a notification like this. Note this is very important when it comes to later managing your server. You have these options over here, as well as to do that every time or for this queue only, which is when you drag across multiple files, they get added to a queue down at the very bottom or only apply to downloads. I do recommend that you watch when you click this option because once you've set it to always use this action and none of these below, then as soon as you drag something across that you didn't mean to, boop, you've lost the copy on the Rust server's side and replaced it with a local one. So anyways, I'll be hitting OK to overwrite it on my PC because I know I want to. I'll simply open it up and you'll see this over here. So welcome message, join message, joined unknown and left. Here's where you can actually get to customizing it. You may be a bit confused if you're not familiar with HTML or setting up colors, but this is basically how you do it. So here's where we get to changing things. So welcome to the server, which we can put in the server name, etc., etc., And you can customize this the way that you want. So I'll be connecting to the server to show you exactly what this does. There we go, we've now woken up, and as you can see, we have it over here. So welcome to the server, type slash info, etc, etc. As you can remember, that's this from over here. So of course, without going into too much detail, I'll simply copy and paste in a previous config that I set up myself. I'll save it, close it, and now to upload, we simply drag from the left to the right, over right, Done. So of course this change won't actually do anything until we reload the plugin. So heading back to the Archon console, we'll go 
oxide.reload space welcomer with a capital W. We'll hit enter and as you can see it unloaded and then loaded it. Let's simply reconnect to the server. And there we go. Now that we've reconnected, you can see that the chat message has in fact changed. I changed this character over here from whatever it is to a plus, and there's more information down here. You can see exactly how it's changed and exactly how it's set up. So of course, this isn't a plugin tutorial. This is how to upload and download files from your Rust server. And that was simply just a really extended example. So getting into more, let's learn how exactly you back up your Rust server. So of course you shouldn't be downloading absolutely everything here because most of this is automatically generated when you download and install the Rust dedicated server or if you're paying someone else to host it such as game servers then they'll do that for you. In fact the only real thing we need to copy from here is Oxide. And this is where all of your plugins are. This is the most important thing in my opinion above the map and everything else because those wipe periodically. These will stay and be difficult to set up again once you've gone through a lot of them. So let's learn exactly how you back them up. Well, I'll simply make a folder on my desktop. As you can see, you have two options, create directory and create and enter it. I'll pick the second option, give it a name. I'll call it Rust, enter and boop, we're automatically inside of that folder that's now created on our desktop. I'll make a new folder called Backup and enter that as well. And here's where things get interesting. We'll simply drag from the right hand side onto the left. As you can see, the queue was moving at the bottom and now we have the Oxide folder on our local PC. We've now successfully completed a backup. We have all of the data, the configs, the plugins, logs, and language configuration in there. Great, so now we've successfully finished a backup. Other things you may want to backup, but are less important, would be this server folder over here, inside of which are the databases for blueprints, people's identities and their inventories, etc, etc, and the actual map itself. There's an EAC log and some configurations that may or may not be in there. For me, there's nothing in there. I'll simply drag that from the right to the left, and we've finished yet another part of this backup. Right click, refresh, there it is on our local PC over there. Awesome. So that is how to transfer files between your computer and a Rust server hosted with the game servers or anyone else for that matter. Of course, it'll be slightly different for all companies, but this should be general enough to get you on your feet with basically anything. If you'd like to see more Rust tutorials for setting up and running a successful server, then make sure to check the playlist linked down in the description below. I hope this helped you in some way or another. My name has been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.